Framo Motion has a very powerful API that allows us to work with drag and pen gestures, and we're going to use it to make our model component feel more native. We'll add an ability to close the model by swiping it down, and also have some logic to prevent it from being closed by accident. But first, let's start with the basics. To make motion component draggable, all we need to do is to add drag property on it. So let's open our model component, add drag property to the panel, and save the changes. Now if we click and hold on the panel component, we can move it around in any direction. Now let's see how we can control and constrain dragon behavior. To lock drag into only one axis, we can set drag property to either X or Y. I'll set drag property to Y, and now I can drag the panel only up and down. At this point you've probably noticed that sometimes when I stop dragging, the panel continues to move. In fact, depending on how fast I was dragging before I let go of the element, it can travel quite far. That happens because frame of motion applies momentum to the drag and pan gestures. We can switch off that behavior by setting drag momentum to false, and now when I stop dragging, the panel comes to a dead stop. Let's keep the momentum property for our case. We can also specify how far the draggable object is allowed to move in every direction. Let's add drag constraints property and set top to 0 and bottom to 200. Now when I save the changes and I start dragging the panel, once I move it further than 20 pixels down, I get some resistance. And when I stop dragging, the panel bounces up to be within its specified constraints. Same happens when I drag it up. We set top constraint to 0, so we get some resistance immediately, and when I let go of the panel, it bounces back in its original position. The reason we get this resistance when we move outside the constraints is that by default we have some degree of movement allowed outside the constraints. The property that controls that behavior is called drag elastic, and it can take values from 0 to 1, where 0 means no movement is allowed outside constraints, and 1 means we have full movement and no resistance. Let's set drag elastic to 0, and if we open the panel, we can see that it no longer moves outside its constraints. Now let's take a step back and think about what we are trying to build. We want to be able to close the model by dragging it down, but at the same time, we want to protect users from closing it accidentally. To do that, we need to have some threshold, so we close the model only if we swipe it below that threshold. That means that we want to listen for drag events, and when we stop dragging, we want to check how far the panel traveled from its original position. If the distance from the original position is larger than a certain value, we're going to call onClose function that will close the model. Otherwise, we want the panel to pop back into its original position. We already have enough knowledge to fulfill the second part of the condition, so let's take care of it. I'm going to set both top and bottom constraints to 0, and set drag elastic to 0.8. This way we get enough flexibility to be able to drag the panel down, and also when we stop dragging, it jumps back into its original position. To close the panel when we've dragged it more than a certain value, we need to use onDrag and property. Draggable elements let us execute custom code during different phases of dragging, using onDrag start, onDrag end, onDrag end callbacks. I'm going to add onDrag end callback that takes a function. This function has two arguments. The first one is the event object, which is similar to what you'd receive in a typical event handler. And the second one contains information about the current state of a gesture such as its delta, offset, and velocity. We are interested in an offset property, as it contains information about the distance the elements moved since dragging began. So let's check if offset y is greater than 200, and if it is, we're going to call on close function. Now let's save the changes and see how it works. First I'm going to drag the panel a little, and when I release it, it jumps back into place. If I drag it a bit more, more than 200 pixels to be specific, it is going to close. 
Now let's make render method a little cleaner by taking on drag end function outside, assigning it to handle drag end variable, and then setting it to on drag end property. Now that the function is defined separately, we have to define types for function arguments ourselves. We don't care about the first argument, so I'm just going to type it as any. Info argument has type pan info that we can import from frame a motion package and set here. Okay, next thing that I want to do is to limit the area that can be used for dragging the panel. Let's add a 20 pixel margin on top of the panel and make sure that we can drag it only when we click or tap within that margin. We'll also put a handle indicator to let users know that they can swipe the panel. So let's start by updating our markup and styles. I'm going to add a new div element with a class handle inside model panel and then wrap the children into another div with model body class. Now let's open styles.scss file and add some styling. Inside model panel, I'll add a handle class and set its width to 7 rem, height to 1 rem, and the background to soft gray. Let's also add border radius of 0.5 rem and the margin with 1 rem on top, auto on the sides, and 0 on the bottom. For the model body class, we'll only set the height to be 100% minus 2 rems to account for the height and the margin on the handle. Now all we have to do is to cancel touch events if they originate inside model body and we should be done. Unfortunately, it's not that simple. There is no easy way to cancel drag events, but we can get a little creative here. Let's change model body to be a motion element and add drag property equals Y. This way we have one draggable element nested inside another one, where touch events from inside model body don't propagate up to the model panel, so we can control their drag and behavior separately. We can confirm that by opening the model where we can still drag the whole panel by clicking inside the margin area, but now we can also click and drag inside the model body, and as you can see, it moves independently from the model panel. Now we just need to make sure that model panel is locked into place. So let's set drag constraints property with top equal zero and bottom equal zero, and set drag elastic to zero as well. To recap what we've done here, we made model body a draggable component just so it wouldn't pass drag events down to the model panel, but since we don't want to drag model body itself, we set full constraints in all directions so it couldn't be moved. Let's save the changes and confirm that we cannot drag the model by clicking inside the body, but it still works as before when we click within the touchable margin.